We're Team Pipsqueak, and we're going to present our Capstone 1 presentation to you today. And I am Luke Turner, and I am an undergrad in Computer Science. I'm Andrew Dominic, and I'm an undergrad in Information Technology. I'm Scott Gavin, I'm also an undergraduate in Computer Science. I'm Bill Morris, and I'm an undergrad in Information Technology. And I'm Avery Wells, and I'm an undergrad in Computer Science. So, what is Pipsqueak? Pipsqueak is a web app that we are developing that is a, a tool for instructors and students alike to be able to go out and create lessons, learn from lessons, uh, basically put up some code, make an audio or video presentation to go along with the code, and then sync the code to the video or audio, uh, along with uh, a suite of controls that we're going to enable for this instructor to highlight specific sections, make annotations, uh, fade out other things that aren't important, um, as well as allow the instructor or uh, lesson planner to publish and save them and to allow the students a view and a mode for them to go in and actually just play with the code, see what the code does live in a little browser uh, window that we're going to allow them to make their own code with the lessons that were provided. And uh, let's see. basically they'll be able to reach out and grab a large audience with just a little minimal work uh, and get hands-on experience using it. So why is there a need for this app? Well, the traditional classroom lecture where an instructor stands up and goes over slides in a PowerPoint deck or um, writes on a whiteboard just is not effective for all types of students. There's some types of students that uh, can just grasp it right away through having a code explained to them and just looking at it. But then there's another group of students that they need to work with it hands-on and they need to play with the code and have repetition before they understand it. Uh, that's the group that we're going to target. Um, we think programming is more suitable for a hands-on, in-depth learning experience. And um, through talking to Dr. Musser, we know that uh, instructors want an easier and more effective way to reach a large audience in a large classroom. Uh, through our classes and our jobs, we have a broad skill set we can use to utilize uh, on our project. We all have some experience with agile development. Um, so we've been using the Scrum methodology, which we've already used um, for our documentation. Uh, we know JavaScript and jQuery, which we'll use extensively on the project. Um, we have group members that are comfortable with MongoDB, which we chose for the database, and Node.js, which we chose for the back end. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, we are going to use the Scrum methodology for our project. We've already used that this semester, and it's worked out well, so we'll continue to use that next semester. Uh, we're all familiar with it and used it in the past, so we know the ins and outs of it, and we're comfortable using it. Uh, for the, our Scrum roles will be uh, Andrew's going to be the product owner, uh, Luke will be the Scrum master, and myself, Scott, and Bill will be developers. Uh, for the second semester, we have five milestones planned, and we'll be doing two-week sprints with uh, meetings in between as needed to check up with each other, uh, just kind of meet and see what needs to be changed and how progress is going. Um, and for our Scrum kind of management, we'll be using JIRA. We've already been using that also this semester. Uh, this is just kind of like an example of Scrum board. Um, JIRA also has functions for um, planning out your sprints so you can assign tasks, uh, weight them based on their uh, perceived difficulty. And so we've been using that and we'll continue to use that again next semester. So this is just a basic overview of the technologies we'll be using. Um, for the front end, we'll primarily be using the uh, Angular JS framework. Um, the Popcorn JS will be used uh, for the instructor to be able to dynamically uh, change his and manipulate his code as he's creating the tutorial. Uh, code Mirror will be used for the sandbox where the students will be able to edit that code and then see the output displayed. Um, jQuery and Bootstrap will um, mostly be UI. Um, jQuery also has a file upload widget that we'll probably be taking advantage of. Um, the back end will be Node.js, um, the database will be MongoDB, and testing will be Karma and Jasmine. Okay, like Bill was saying, we're using uh, MongoDB for our server. This chart kind of shows a, a concise view of the, some of the different options we considered and options that are available. Uh, as you can see here is MongoDB down in the center. It is considered to be consistent and partition tolerant. 
So we can, if we choose to, we can uh, expand it, or when it's deployed, it can be expanded among. It can be horizontally expanded to support or to be run on different uh, devices at the same time to provide that that scalability. It's also a um, something that kind of leaned us through it rather than any of the other things down here that are equivalent is one. They're just some of these are more intended for other purposes, um, and two, MongoDB is document oriented, which is nice for our purposes. And then of course, uh, MongoDB, it's, it's open source, which is nice because you get the, uh, the active uh, online element. You can interact with the peers and the creators of it sometimes to kind of use it most effectively. And then like I mentioned, it's able to scale horizontally, natively, and then it can scale vertically through the use of sharding. And it also supports through, or with Node.js, it supports uh, the RESTful API through the, this Crest uh, plugin. And that was important for us because we were planning on using uh, a RESTful system for our, our web application. And then just the fact that it, it, it supports JavaScript natively and it, in, it, and it interacts so well, so beautifully with, with Node.js, which is what we'll be using for the back end. So. Uh, as you said, we'll be using Node.js for the back end. Uh, it's also written in JavaScript, so it appeals to our skill set, and it integrates nicely with MongoDB. Um, it will horizontally scale and vertically scale, so as if our app explodes and becomes very popular, we can just add more servers, uh, or if we want to increase the function stack, we can vertically stack it as well. It runs on Google's V8 server, or client, and it will allow us to provide a RESTful service on the back end. So we'll be designing it for a web app, but it'll also provide functionality for mobile development down the road or a variety of other functions in the future. It'll, it'll come ready for future expandability. Uh, also, it has the Node Packet Manager, which is a convenient tool that will have access to a large variety of plugins and modules so that we have a particular problem that we need solved, chances are there's a lot of solutions out there already that we can pull from and grab from and it'll also allow extensibility for other people down the road if they want to extend our product. So um, as I mentioned earlier we'll be using AngularJS as our primary front-end framework. Um, the primary benefit to using AngularJS is that it will help link the front-end to the back-end. Um, it, of course, incorporates all the functionality that we're going to need. Um, I guess, for example, uh, linking in front of the back end, um, it has a feature called directives where you can actually put um, back end functionality right into the HTML code. Uh, there's also security features um, that AngularJS has uh, built in security features um, like to protect against, to protect against things like uh, cross site scripting. Um, as well as some uh, optional security plugins um, that we can use should we decide that uh, they can be useful. Um, and then like the other uh, languages I already mentioned, it is JavaScript, so um, it will work well with the other uh, technologies that we'll be using. To uh, accomplish the code interaction and uh, demonstrations, we'll be using two libraries, the first of which is PopcornJS. What that allows us to do is uh, interactively uh, manipulate the DOM based on a timestamp in the audio or video file that the professor has uploaded. And so what the professor can do is say, um, at five seconds into the video, I'm talking about this section of code. Um, they can give us those two pieces of information. With PopcornJS, we can um, perform functions on the section of code at the proper time in the video. And so I'll give a very good um, interactive demonstration that's something more than just kind of stale talking about the code in general. And then for our sandbox editor that will allow students to play with the code, we will be using CodeMirror. Uh, we chose CodeMirror because it is, uh, supports a lot of languages and it's got a lot of nice features. Uh, we looked at a few other libraries, but CodeMirror was, um, had the best features overall. And it supports syntax highlighting, code folding, um, bracket and tag matching, also line numbers. And so you can see here, uh, this is actually what code mirror would look like with uh, JavaScript. So you can see that it's got the syntax highlighted as it should. It's got line numbers on the side, so it's easy to see which part is being talked about. And it's also got the, uh, um, the folding portion as well. So you can see that it's actually, it would be a pretty decent code editor for just having it as a text window in your browser. 
All right, when we were planning for this project, we had to consider a, a number of constraints. The, the primary one of these, obviously, is economic constraints to try and make it as close to a real world scenario as possible. Um, so we considered uh, $100,000 for, for our incidentals, basically, so not counting our salaries. So that would cover office space and licensing software and um, renting out servers and things of that nature. Um, and then obviously there are environmental constraints. There are five of us, so with that human constraint there, the, we have to had to consider and design a project that we could that the five of us could do in the three month period, and we could do and implement well in that period. So we had to make sure our scope wasn't too broad. And then obviously there's the uh, equipment and technology. The equipment we considered were things like uh, the servers, so where we were going to get our servers from, how powerful they would be. And we've been kind of been going between uh, DigitalOcean servers and Amazon EC2 servers for that, for um, for those means. Uh, for security purposes, our web app will have a login system. Uh, we'll be using HTTPS protocol for the security of the user. Anytime handling um, username or passwords, um, we'll open a port with an SSL connection, which will be secure. Um, the Node.js server will hash the password and salt it and compare it with the database. And then another measure we'll use for security is to limit the username and password for format and length. Uh, for securing the database, MongoDB has some uh, nice features built in that we're going to utilize. Uh, for authentication, we're going to use password-based. For authorization, we'll have a role-based access control system. Uh, well, there'll be two roles, an instructor and a student, and their privileges will be limited based on the role. Uh, there's also an auditing system we can use to uh, scan system activity to make sure our security features are working and um, we'll use SSL encryption so that only intended users can view network traffic. Uh, Cross-site scripting is a major threat because we built our, we're going to build uh, the project on uh, JavaScript frameworks. Um, what we really worry about is a uh, user could put malicious code into the lecture and then send out the link to students. Um, to prevent that, we're going to sanitize any user input before we use it. And also, as Bill mentioned earlier, uh, AngularJS ha Angular has countermeasures that use client-side AJAX calls. For permissions, we'll have co cookies and sessions. Uh, a cookie will be created upon a successful user login as a unique identifier and it will expire on browser close. And we'll also use SSL connection again for security. OK, so this is just a brief uh, summary of our project timeline. Um, essentially, we're going to be having uh, five milestones throughout uh, the spring semester. Um, milestone one is just going to be um, getting back together, reestablishing our communication as a group, um, doing any initial database setup that needs to be done, and uh, just creating a sort of basic uh, layout of the instructor view. Um, milestone two is going to be the bulk of our project, so uh, we've given ourselves a month and a half to do um, this milestone alone. Um, it's going to include things like um, incorporating the audio uh, video file upload, um, the file, uh, the code file upload, um, as well as any code manipulation options um, that the instructor can use to uh, create a tutorial and putting all those things together. Um, milestone three is going to be uh, essentially um, creating the URL generation. So when the instructor is done creating this tutorial video, um, they would um, hit publish and create a URL that the students would then go to um, to get to that tutorial. Um, and then also in that milestone, we'll actually be creating that student view um, and anything that goes, goes along with that. And then milestone four will be um, implementing the sandbox and the output display. So the sandbox, I think I was mentioned earlier, but the sandbox is where the student can go in and um, actually edit the code that the uh, instructor uploads into his tutorial and uh, have it displayed, um, have those changes displayed um, to the student so they can uh, kind of play with it. Um, and then also in milestone four, we'll be finishing, else, finishing anything else up that needs it. Uh, milestone five is just getting ready for the presentation. Uh, before we jump into the uh, coding next semester, 
we're going to do some individual angular JS training. Uh, not all of us are familiar with that and have used it in the past, but it's going to play a very large role in our project, so it'd be beneficial to all have kind of a ground sense of understanding for that. And so for our individual training, we're going to each go through the uh, code school course on AngularJS, and that's got a few different levels so that we can get a, a pretty good understanding of it so that we can jump right into development next semester. So since we're going to be using a lot of new tools, uh, not all familiar to all of us, we're going to implement a form of test-driven development. Uh, Basically, we're going to have a system where we're going to assign stories and tasks as part of the Scrum methodology, and then each sprint, we're going to assign a person to code review uh, another programmer, and we'll switch that up so you're not always doing the same person. But basically, you'll write your tasks, you're going to write your unit tests, and then somebody will code review and move it into the testing board on our work board. And then the product owner and scrum master are going to go through and make sure all the acceptance criteria are met before marking it as complete. Um, what that'll do for us is provide uh, integrity of our code and make sure that any changes down the road don't mess up anything from prior, uh, prior developments or prior sprints. So it's all going in clean and staying clean. <clears throat> Towards the end of our design phase, we uh, decided that we needed to go ahead and mock out sort of what it was going to look like. So we've got a couple of mocks for uh, instructor view and student view. So this is the instructor view on the screen. At the top we're going to have some browser buttons uh, so you can navigate the site and log in. And in the middle there's going to be the uploaded audio or video, the uploaded code that's going to be manipulated. And then on the left we're going to have the controls for manipulating the code so you can add annotations. Uh, we wrote some mock functions for writing annotations and highlighting portions of code and fading out and fading in portions of code as well. And on the right we're going to keep track of history so if you don't like the way something looks or if you want to uh, or made an accidental click on another section you can undo it and redo it. Additionally we're going to provide a save function so if you don't have to do it all in one sitting and finally once it's ready you can publish uh, which will bring you to the student view or provide you with a link to send people to the student view where they can actually click play, listen to, or watch your video, and then it'll go through all the changes that you made to the DOM, as well as provide a sandbox mode for them to manipulate code and actually execute it uh, there in the browser to see what their changes are doing live as they do. And that is the Pipsqueak project.